Hey yo, what is up guys? So for today's video, I'm doing a quick simple guide on how to optimize your PC's CPU performance. Um, it's going to be split into two main sections. First part is I'm going to show you the Windows side optimizations, and the second part I'm going to be showing you the BIOS settings you guys need to set. Um, this guide mainly focuses for Intel. Uh, it still works for AMD. All the Windows side optimizations work perfectly fine with AMD. However, the BIOS settings are going to mainly primarily be used for um, Intel based platforms. However, they're still going to work with Ryzen based platforms. Um, you just have to like add some variability and do some of your own research to make sure it's compatible still because I don't have an AMD system to test on hand currently. I will though with the um, release of the 5000 series here in a couple weeks hopefully. Um, so I'll do, probably do another updated guide then but for now um, again this just works primarily for the current gen Ryzen and for Intel. Um, so yeah, anyways, I'm gonna have the timestamps in the description below if you guys want to like skip to the bio settings or skip to the window settings um, So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first part of this video is when we're showcasing the Windows power plan that I'm using um, Basically the Windows power plan is what mainly determines your CPU based performance at least on the Windows side There's not much you can do besides this. So for the sake of this video, I've actually made a custom power plan um, Again, I'm titled it Azure's power plan um, basically, this power plan is based off of Bitsum's power plan, um, which you can find a download link in the description below if you just want to use his. I just tweaked a couple little things in there. Um, you can download the power plan through Power Control. Basically, just install Power Control and then install the power plan through uh, this little tab right here. You just basically click Bitsum's power plan, make active. However, I will have a download link in the description below if you guys want to use my power plan, which I would suggest using because it's a, again, it's a slightly modified version. A bit sums. I basically disabled a couple like um, power saving features based on Windows, like a PCIe uh, power savings, which basically makes the USB power states enabled at all time, which helps to reduce like mouse latency and a couple other things. Um, yeah, but again, um, please go into this. Make sure don't don't expect like a crazy performance boost. This is just trying to make things a little bit more snappier. You're gonna notice uh, higher scores in like Cinebench, single threaded, multi threaded, just a little bit extra performance. And again, this is also helps to basically make sure like all your cores are unparked. So as you can see here, if we go into task manager real quick, um, performance, again, my CPU is pinned at five gigahertz at all times. Not that it's using all the power at once. It's just like basically making sure that this number isn't fluctuating. You want a consistent um, number here that helps to reduce like system latency and for gaming and just for overall applications, you want this number to be fixed. And this power plan helps to do that. And again, just helps to reduce latency as a whole. So um, I'm not going to show you guys how to make a custom power plan. I'm going to be showing you basically how to use the power plan that I'm going to be providing you with. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to import, export power plans and how to rename them. So yeah, anyways, without further ado, let's actually get into the video here. So now to actually uh, go ahead and apply my power plan, basically I'm going to have two files in the description below on my Google Drive. Just go ahead and download it. It's going to be in a uh, Windows power plan uh, folder. And just basically go ahead and extract it to your desktop, wherever you want it to be using like programs like 7-Zip or WinRAR. Either case, doesn't matter. Um, basically what this is, it's a very simple bat document. Basically what I'm doing is I'm opening PowerShell and importing this power plan. Um, yeah, so I have a title Azure with PowerPlan.pal and this is the power plan GUID. So basically you just want to take this, copy it, go to wherever your C drive is, paste, press continue, and then go back to wherever you have the bat file, double click it. Um, for me it's going to say the scheme cannot be imported because I already have it, I already have it set active as you can see here. But for you guys, it should go ahead and make sure that the power plan is actually imported. Um, again, you don't have to use this uh, bat file to do it. You can do it manually um, through PowerShell by basically just going ahead, copying this line, opening PowerShell, right click it, run as administrator, paste the little GUID here, press enter, and then it'll go ahead and import it. And again, I've already done that, so it won't actually work for me, but yeah, it's super simple. And again, you can go ahead and just delete this. Once you're done with it, you don't need it anymore. Continue because it's already, again it's already gonna be taking that file and copying it to the local Windows like power registry folder. So you actually don't need that original file whatsoever. And I actually make that power plan active when I press Windows key R, go to control, go to hardware and sounds, go to power options, and make sure the Azurus power plan is actually selected. So the next step we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and delete the other Windows power plans. Um I'd highly recommend you guys to do so as I found on like certain Windows updates or when I restarted my computer, Windows has actually already reset it to a different Windows power plan. Um, even if you had this one selected. So it's better just to have it so that you only have one Windows power plan active. Um, so Windows won't randomly switch it up on you. And to do that, it's really, really easy. Basically you just wanna navigate to Windows key Open PowerShell again, make sure you're running as an administrator, press yes, and I'll have all the commands in the description below so you literally can just copy and paste it if you like to. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to give you guys an overall view if you guys want to do this on your own at some point. So again, just do power config space list. And what this does, it lists all the active power plans. As you can see here, we have balance here and we have my power plan here. And this is this power scheme GUID. Basically, you need this to actually delete the other power plans. Basically, again, just go in here, copy the actual power plan, type in power config space delete paste the actual GUID so I'm going to be deleting balance for the sake of this video and again just press enter and boom it'll actually delete the power plan and again to make sure this works let's go ahead and type in power config dash list again press enter and as you can see here the only active power plan is mine so as you can see it worked so if we go back into actual the windows power settings see here that I only have the the only active power plan is as power plan so windows can no longer actually change it to a different one um, so yeah, you're gonna be completely fine on that point. As a quick disclaimer, if you are running a laptop, you're gonna notice at least a little bit more power drain. But this is a more intensive power plan. So I'd actually personally, if you're on a laptop, recommend leaving the other power plans in case you're like taking your laptop on the go and you just save power and you're not trying to do like any intensive workloads like gaming or video rendering. You just want something chill, just like extend your battery life. Just leave the other power plans just in case. But if you're on a desktop, there's no need for other ones. As again, you don't have to worry about um, your battery draining, obviously. So yeah, the next step, I'm going to be doing a couple personal preference things. Um, for these two, make sure you have these two set to nothing, and then make sure you have these two as unselected, as I personally, I would never recommend setting your PC to sleep, as that can cause like RAM timings issues, and as this the way Windows powers up, it's better just to have your computer go from a shutdown to an on state rather than having a sleep state, as that can cause latency issues, um, and you just really don't want that. Um, again, this is personal preference. I just like to have these completely disabled. And yeah, so we go back to this page, go to change when the computer sleeps. I like to have these set to never. Again, it's kind of personal preference. Make sure this is set to never, but the display thing, that's personal preference. If you like to have yours auto shut off for a reason, um, you see like that. You guys don't actually have to change anything else because I've already done that through the Windows Power Plan settings here. Everything in here is going to be automatically done as soon as you import it instead of active. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about it ever again. So one last little cool thing I'm going to show you guys how to do is how to actually rename your power plan. This is completely optional. This is just more like a aesthetics, personal preference thing. I've actually seen no one else actually discuss this. So I just kind of wanted to bring it to light just in case that's something you want to actually end up doing. So I'm going to have this command in the description below. Basically type in power config space change name. To do so, again, you want to go to power config space list. And this is going to have my power plan there as a default GUID and the name. Um, so again, just type in power config space change name and then you want to basically take this GUID, paste it here and then type in whatever name you want it to be. So for example, I'll put, um, I don't know, let's say um, power, let's put it like default power plan, right? It can be literally anything you want it to be. I'm just doing this for the sake of this video. And again, if you press enter here, it's going to rename the default power plan. However, if you guys want to actually rename the power plan description, which if you're curious what that looks like, um, if we go back to our Windows power settings, this is set to provide Azure's optimized CPU performance. You can change this to literally whatever you want to. So for example, um, I'll just put like as a descriptor, I'll put, um, I don't know, gives CPU, oh, whoops, give CPU power boost or something random like that. Press enter. If you go back into the Windows control panel, boom. See here, it renames the default power plan, the name, and the description below. So again, I'm gonna have all these commands in the description below if you just want to copy and paste. Super easy. If you guys want to like make a custom power plan, this is one of the ways you can do it. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this section of this video. I'm gonna be now moving on to the BIOS settings. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so now we're gonna go to the BIOS section of this video. Um, so again, I'm gonna apologize for the shitty video on audio quality. This is being recorded on my iPhone because I don't have like a capture card to record my display. But essentially, we're gonna be just tweaking a couple of settings. Again, I'm doing this on a Z390 um, Intel-based platform. So it's gonna vary between uh, AMD and the newer gen Intel. Um, so you're gonna buy those settings are gonna obviously look a little different, but you basically wanna be applying the same um, principles to it. So um, first of all, we're basically gonna to go to the OC settings. This is in a MSI BIOS, so it's gonna look a little different if you're on ASRock, ASUS, and whatnot. Um, basically, what we're gonna be doing here is basically I'm gonna go ahead and disable Intel Turbo Boost and EST. Um, this only works though if you're running an actual overclock system. Personally, I'm running a five gigahertz overclock on my CPU, so I like to actually have a default. I like to have my I like to have my CPU locked at five gigahertz at all times. So you can see here on the CPU ratio, uh, it's 50, and that basically sets it to five gigahertz at all time. 
Um, again, if you're not running an overclock, you can go ahead and ignore this step. Just leave it default. Once you have that set done, you want to go down, go all the way to the bottom, skip all the voltage settings, and it's going to be at the bottom towards CPU features. Basically, we're just going to be tweaking a couple things here. Um, personally, I like to have hyperthreading enabled. If you're on an AMD system, you want to make sure you have SMT disabled, as that causes a lot of in-game latency problems due to the way the CCX is designed on the actual, like, Ryzen base die. That's going to be changing with the newer gen Ryzen, but if you're on, like, the 3000 series, 2000, or even first gen Ryzen, always make sure you have SMT disabled, as it literally causes mouse input lag. Um, so yeah, again, if you're on Intel, just ignore this step. Um, but yeah, basically, I want to go ahead and disable Intel virtualization tech. Um, if you're running a, basically, like a virtual system, like a virtual machine, leave this enabled. I like to have it disabled, as I don't run virtual machines. Um, same thing with Intel VDD tech. It's tied into virtual machines. I leave it disabled. Um, the most important thing I'm going to disable here, though, is Intel C states. This is a power savings feature baked into the actual CPU. Um, enabling this causes a insane amount of latency and um, basically just like you don't need it if you're running any modern CPU just disable it unless you're on a laptop and then you can leave it enabled as it saves a little bit of power uh, it's up to you though um, I disable CFG lock as well um, for the long duration and short duration power load set this to the maximum it can be um, for me, it's 4,996. Obviously, the system is not going to actually be running that much voltage. It's basically just giving the CPU more headroom to room, run through. It's basically just giving the CPU more headroom to run at. Uh, so basically, it's making sure that you're going to actually be running at the default. You're going to actually be running at the advertised clock speeds of your given CPU. Do the same thing on AMD-based system or any of the newer Intel. Um, you should be good to go. The very last thing I like to say one year too is the uh, safeguard extensions and Intel speed shift. Save up both these, they're unneeded, causes the latency interrupts. And yeah, that's about it. So that's about it for the BIOS side of this. Um, so again, just to recap, disable C states, disable CFG lock, disable all the power saving settings you can. And uh, again, for AMD, you wanna basically make sure you have SMT disabled. And yeah, it should be good to go. And then again, just make sure you go ahead, exit, and make sure you save. Your BIOS settings, I obviously didn't change anything, but if you do, um, make sure you guys press yes on whatever your given BIOS is, and that's gonna go ahead and save all your BIOS settings. So that's gonna be it for this video. If this helped you in any way, uh, please don't forget to drop a like, comment, subscribe, it helps out the channel a lot. Again, I'm gonna have every single download link in the description below alongside the commands and everything you need. If there's any questions, please don't be hesitant to put them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer each and every single one of you guys. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it. Peace.